In this video, I'm going to show you inside of Visual Studio some of the things we talked about in this diagram in the architecture overview video. So for instance, um, on the left we talked about receive ports and the right we talked about send ports. So those can be defined over here on the left. There's a window called the BizTalk Explorer. And by the way, if you happen to ever close that, you can just come up here and click View BizTalk Explorer. So it may not actually be open on your machine. And then here you can actually connect to more than one server. Like you might have a test server and a QA and a production server. And you can connect to all three from the same Visual Studio. And then you can expand this, of course. Now you see you have assemblies, which are your DLLs, your orchestrations. Roles and parties have to do with BAS, business activity services. Then you have your send port groups, your send ports, and your receive ports. So let's start by looking at a receive port. And you see here a list. And I'm trying to remember if I have one that has more than one receive location. I probably don't. OK, I found one that I do. So I just basically expanded all these. And here's one called receive map demo in which you'll see how we build that and use it in uh, many of the videos that are upcoming. This will be one of our basic uh, receive ports for, I'd say, 75% of the examples that we will do. And so here you have a flat file receive location and an XML receive location. And so the reason those two have to be separate are that, or the reason is that there has to be a pipeline different for them. So first of all, let's click on the receive port. Now, if you click here, properties, it's kind of worthless. It just takes you over here to the properties window, and there's only one property there. So, and, and the other property you can't change. So it's kind of not that useful. So if instead, if you double click on it, or you right click and then say edit, that will open it up in the uh, useful properties window, basically. And so here you have the general properties. We have the name of it up here, and you can actually just rename these at will. Um, it usually doesn't have much impact on how your system works because all this is is an entry in a database, just a human readable name. Then uh, you have your general options such as tracking. We'll talk about that later, how you can turn tracking and where to see messages when they're, when they're tracked. You do have authentication here. Then you have inbound maps. So let me just show you over here on our diagram. We talked about how one receive port can have many optional maps. And so you can see right now, this has no maps hooked to it. So that's pretty much a receive port. Now, let's look at a couple of receive locations here. We'll start with the flat file. So I call them RCV for receive and then RLOC for receive location. You should have your own naming convention in mind when you begin development of your BizTalk system so that at least it'll be consistent within your company. So we're going to open this receive location. Again, the name is up here. You can easily rename it. Then here you have your transport type. And you can see we have file is the default. Well, not the default. That's what we're using for this one. And then here's the URI. And you cannot actually type in this field. If I try to type there, nothing happens. You have to click the dot, dot, dot ellipse over here. So then that opens. And the reason for that is basically that whatever protocol you're using, this screen is going to be different. So if I had here, instead of a file protocol, I had an SQL protocol. Then I click the three dots, I'm going to see a totally different screen. So this screen is basically totally variable depending upon the protocol that you select. So here's the file protocol. It basically says, I want to watch this disk directory. And this is, I think it probably uses the file system watcher class, or it may actually do polling. I've never actually decided which one it does. But it more or less watches this directory. And when a star.txt file appears in that directory, it basically says, OK, I want to receive this into the BizTalk system. It publishes it to that message box database that we talked over here. And then it republishes it to all the different subscribers that are asking for those types of messages. Now, there's some other options on here, obviously. But I'm trying to give you the big picture right now in these first few videos. Then you have here a receive pipeline. And you see here, here's all the different pipelines on my system. So all the ones that come with Microsoft, obviously start with Microsoft dot. And then you have the uh, default pipeline, pass through, receive, and the default pipeline, XML. In this case, let me back up. I'm using, let me actually cancel and reopen this. Uh, I think that's actually not the one I want to use. So I think here I have actually written a separate pipeline, but I think I lose it when I deploy. So. Um, Anyway here, anyway, here we have some PO schemas, standard purchase order batches. And there's one here called flat file. 
and I've done different versions of flat files in some of the videos that we're going to do. So obviously you're going to have to pick the right pipeline that matches the type of data you're receiving. So if you're receiving a flat file positional, we'd use this one. If we're receiving a flat file comma separated, we would use this one. So you pick your pipeline there. You can also put a start and stop window to have like, I only want to receive files between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. if you want to, or between certain dates. Okay, then here's an XML, it's very similar, it's a file. The only difference is the pipeline you see here has batch purchase orders RIP, which I don't know what that stands for. But So those are some receives. Now let's go look at some send ports. So we go back up here. And you see various SIN ports. Let's just pick this one. And you see again you have a protocol. And so it's very similar if you uh, click the dot 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 here. It gives you the name of the disk where that file will be written. And here you specify the name of the file. And we actually have a variable here that's substituted in the file name called percent message ID. And that will substitute a GUID, a globally unique ID, inside of that file name that will be the message ID. You can copy, create new files, or you can actually append to existing files, so you have, or actually overwrite old files. So there's several options there. I almost always use create new here. And then on a send port, you can actually have a primary and a secondary. And the basic reason for that is if your primary fails after so many retries, you can then save the file in the secondary location. So the secondary location is optional. The primary is required. A common example would be if you're going to FTP to another company, and maybe you, you retry every five minutes and six times. So after 30 minutes, if the FTP doesn't work, you write the file to your own disk, and then you have someone have a business process of how to handle these exceptions. You have your other options, like what kind of tracking you want to do. Uh, you can use certificates for encryption. There's your pipeline again. Well, not again, there's your pipeline. So on a send port, you also have pipelines just like you do on receive ports. This just happens to be the screen where they're specified. And so if you were mapping it back to a, back to a flat file, you would put a flat file pipeline here. And then here's your filters. And in this case, we actually have a filter here. It says, I only want to subscribe to message types equal purchase order. So message type is basically your schema name. We'll explain more about that later. And then you can have maps here that you can apply outbound. And then you're going to get a list of all the maps you've deployed, and you would pick these. And you could actually have several here in this list. So I really don't want those because that might mess me up. So I'm going to delete all these. And so that's a send port. Now we also have send port groups, which is basically, again, think of Outlook distribution list. And so here are all my send ports in this group. Like I want to take demo map out. Uh, out FTP, remove it, and then when I re-add it, so I can just come here and I can add again various other send ports. And so all the things in the list right here are all the send ports that I have not yet added. And again, I want to cancel that. So in this video, we basically looked at three things over here, the receive ports, send ports, and send port groups.